What's going on guys? Welcome back. Welcome to the ATV revolution. I hope you guys had a great Valentine's Day. I really do. Um, thank you for all the positive feedback on my Valentine's Day videos. And uh, what we're getting into today is Bike of the Week 6, and we're going to be doing a TRX 250R. This week it's not going to be a hybrid build or anything like that. It's just a badass build. I'm also going to be including some bonus footage on Project 250R. I did get my CEO cylinder in from ESR, <laughs> and it's badass, man. I just got it yesterday, and uh, I've really only had a chance to kind of vaguely look it over. And I do want to share that with you guys, so I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek. That's going to be at the end of the video, so definitely make sure to check, um, stick around for that. So now getting back to the bike of the week, this is a 1986 TRX 250R. It's built by Carlos, and he calls it the Commander of Ages. And if I don't say so myself, I think this quad definitely deserves that name. It is a badass build. I think he used terrific colors on this. I think the white frame and the white plastics with all the chrome and polished parts is a really nice offset, and I think it looks excellent. So first and foremost, let me show you some pictures of this quad the way that he received it. So we're going to do this just the way we did last week, where we're going to kind of look at these pictures together. And you'll be able to see my mouse cursor and know exactly what I'm talking about. So here is the quad as it sat the way he purchased it. Now he said that it was in really bad shape. And even though in these pictures it does look pretty good, it's kind of hard to tell um, from pictures whether or not a quad's in good shape or not. It could look really nice and actually be a piece of junk. I'm not saying it's a piece of junk, but you know, it looks like it has fairly new Meyer fenders on there. That can make a quad look really nice. And the orange um, powder coated frame. Granted, this picture isn't the uh, best quality. It's a little bit blurry. So it's possible that there's a bunch of imperfections in it. Um, but the motor looks nice. It looks like, um, I'd say that's an ESR pipe, it looks like. And uh, it looks like that's in pretty good shape and stuff. But like I said, you really it's, it's hard to tell from pictures. Um, you can see it looks like it's got some of the old school DG Nerf bars on there. That's the same thing that my 250R came with. It's got an AC bumper, uh, from what I can tell. Some nice polished rims. So it doesn't look terrible. Move into this next picture here. Oops. Uh, here's the front view. Get a good look at the, uh, the bumper. It's got some old school bars on there. You can see the tires are wasted. They're like completely flat, not not like air flat. Like the uh, the knobbies are really flat. There's barely any tread left on there. It looks like it was ridden on the street maybe. Here's a look at the other side. You can see he's got the original toolkit on there. Seat cover looks like it's seen better days. But overall, it doesn't look like a terrible starting point. And of course, a picture of the back. And here you can see the back tires are wasted also. Uh, this looks like the best tire of the four. And this actually has one of those old school bumpers in the back. And I think that's a pretty cool look. I think it's a very classic look. And I'm actually thinking about possibly putting on one, putting one of those on Project 250R. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys think that'd be a good idea or not. So what's really cool about this build is that Carlos lives in Puerto Rico. So that's part of the reason I picked this quad for quad of the week. I have a lot of subscribers. Um, they don't live in the US and they tell me how difficult it is to get parts and how much more expensive they are. Um, I can't attest to this. From my own personal experience because i live here in the states uh, but from what i understand getting parts outside of the us is really difficult because one a lot of companies don't offer international shipping and two the parts need to go through customs shipping costs more money and a lot of fees are tacked on to the actual cost of parts so luckily carlos was able to get all these parts through ebay uh, for the most part but it's definitely to me it's more impressive if you can build a nice quad outside of the states because you have less resources so props to you, Carlos. I think it's awesome what you did. So check out this picture of the parts pile that Carlos has. You know, you can see there's just a crap load of stuff here, man. And you know what that's like. This is exactly what I'm going through with Project 250R right now. I got all these boxes and all these parts and I'm just dying to start the build. This is like the most exciting time. Um, if anybody, any of you guys that have done a build before, you know what this is like. Just what the f you just want to get it started man it's just awesome so thanks for sharing that picture carlos all right now let's get into this build so unfortunately i don't have any um intermediate pictures all i have are those before pictures and after pictures and um i didn't get too many crazy details but i did get an awesome parts list this thing has so many parts carlos told me that he spent over twelve thousand dollars building this quad and it's mostly frame and body accessories the motor does have some nice ups on it um, but it's a factory OEM cylinder. I'm not sure if it's bored or not, but it is the OEM cylinder. He's got an LRD pipe on there, a PWK 38 millimeter carburetor. Uh, you can see he's got the PWR radiator, the um, aluminum shrouds, and um, a couple other things, but it is the factory bore. Most of the money went into the suspension, the A-arms, body, and things like that. So as we move into this thing, you can see he's got the Duncan chrome bumper, the Hydrodynamics A-arms, they are plus twos. Um, these are pep shocks up front. It's got a lot of chrome parts in here. You can see those 
radiator shrouds up here. Those are so cool, man. One of my favorite looking things on the old school 250Rs is those aluminum shrouds. You can see how clean everything is in here by the brakes and whatnot. So as we move on here, you'll see this is all, looks like he redid everything, polished most of the parts up. He did an excellent job. See how clean that caliper is. Really, really looks like brand new. And here's a shot of the front hub. It's definitely an aftermarket hub. And I'm looking at the disc brake in the back. So this quad's an 86. And uh, the 1986 and 1987 hubs had four bolts in the disc brake. So, and then in 88 and 89, there's three bolts, which is actually something that I just figured out. Um, but you can see here in the back, it looks like there are four bolts. So I don't know if this is an aftermarket styled after the 87 and 86 style um, hubs, or it could possibly be 400EX or 450R. It's really common that guy, the guys switch out for that style. Um, but no matter how you look at it, those front hubs definitely look trick. And you see here, he's got um, aftermarket hubs in the back also. And he's got some Douglas DWT bead locks on the back. Really nice setup. Everything's nice and polished. Looks killer. And as we move beyond that tire, you can see he's got an anti-fade by Jansen Outlaw. Now, I was not aware that they even made an anti-fade. Perhaps it's a discontinued part, uh, but it looks really killer. And the fact that it's anodized red, it goes with the build really, really nicely. You can see he has everything back here all polished and cleaned up too. There's another close-up look at the anti-fade. And here is an LSR block off. This is the rear brake setup. Everything's polished up and clean. And you see these nice stainless steel bolts. He has an alloy uh, stainless bolt kit on the entire quad. So if you're wondering why the hardware might not look like traditional hardware, that's why. And moving under the quad, this is kind of relative because we just did our linkage. If you haven't already, definitely check out the last video I posted up where we do a restoration on the 250R linkage and a thumb throttle restoration. But you can see he put a little bit more effort into his than I did with mine. Um, granted, I didn't want mine to be flashy and polished, but he did a really good job polishing up all of this linkage. And even though this is a part of the quad that's kind of not seen, it still looks awesome. And when you take a look underneath, it definitely adds to the quad and the attention to detail. You can see right here how shiny that is. Carlos definitely took a lot of time uh, making that look the way that it does right there. And now we're moving on to the rear master cylinder. You can see he's got some stainless steel braided lines, did an excellent job polishing this up. And here is the rear um, master cylinder brake reservoir. Uh, looks like it's a piece of billet made by NOS Machining. I have a similar one made by NPM, definitely a trick part. These are like the little parts that really set a build apart. Couple good looks at that. And now here, this is a beautiful picture right here, man. This is the um, right side of the motor and just the, that LRD pipe right here looks awesome. And in case some of you guys don't know, LRD um, is now LED. It's the same company and they always made premium products, man. LRD was like my favorite growing up as a kid. I mean, just look at that pipe, especially with all these polished, the polished case here, polished water pump cover. Um, you got the billet kicker up here, the polished rear master cylinder, the Henson brake pedal. All that stuff put together with the white frame. It just looks awesome, man. It looks like a show quad. It looks great. And here is the kicker that's made by Devol. I'm not sure if they make a billet kicker for the 250R. If they do, I might be looking into getting one of those because it looks sick. Here's the water pump cover, all polished up. And here is the exhaust flange. You can see that's billet also. And you can see how clean that LRD pipe is. And here's a shot. You can see those uh, radiator hoses are by CV4. Definitely goes with the build scheme. And this is the exhaust pipe clamp. Now we're moving on to the left side of the motor. You can see that stator cover looks fresh, man. That thing is polished to a chrome finish and it looks sick. He's got the Pro Design billet shifter. The, I believe this is a Pro Design case saver also. And the polished cool head. All these parts really go together nice. And it looks like he polished up his radiator guards or um, radiator shrouds as well. And all really looks good. And there's a close up of that stator cover. Definitely a killer look. There's that PWR radiator and a shot from the back of the motor. You can see that LRD exhaust flowing through here real nice. And this is a uh, an, an oversized intake boot by UPP. And uh, it looks like it's hooked up to that 38 millimeter carb he's got right there. And up front, we have a Lone Star steering stem. It's got the Lone Star risers. Give you another look at the, um, the handle, the clamps. And of course, there is the stem itself. And these are the reservoirs for the PEP suspension up front. Now, come on, man. Zip ties, really? Carlos, you put so much time into this quad. You gotta get some, at least some hose clamps on there, dude. 
But regardless, man, maybe he switched that um, from now. But it still looks killer the way that it is. I'm not going to lie. I've run zip ties on quads before, you know, when you're in a pinch. And they work. So here is the gas cap. So this is, I'm actually looking for one of these myself. Um, this is a mod quad gas cap. And I tried finding one of these for my quad too. But believe it or not, from the 86 and 87 to the 88 and 89, they have different thread pitches. Uh, the 88 and 89 are the same and the 86, 87 are the same. And all the aftermarket gas caps are for the 88 and 89, which sucks. So I haven't been able to find one for the 86, 87. If anybody has one and they want to sell it, a nice cap like this, uh, make sure to shoot me a DM at Michael Sabo 350 and I'll probably buy it from you. Um, but you can see the top of the LSR steering stem here. He's got the Pro Taper bars. They are ATV mid, that's the bend. And here's some more billet parts. This is a brake reservoir cover he's got up front. And on the other side, he has a chariot thumb throttle, and that looks absolutely beautiful, man. That thing looks like a mirror. Look at that thing. You can see it says chariot right there on the bottom. Excellent parts. And here's a shot of that Hinson brake lever. They're actually really rare. They cost like $170 if you can find one used. And up front, you can see these custom studs that he has in the full bore plastics. It definitely adds to the look, um, to that whole Commander of Legions thing. It looks like an old Metal Militia logo up here. That's pretty sick. It is Metal Militia. I see the little MM up there. That's awesome. And here is the final shot. That's what it looks like today. And real quick, we're going to do a little flip flop back and forth between the old and new. Check that out. Oh my God, it looks so much better now. Definitely looking way better. So that is this week's quad of the week. You can tell that Carlos put a ton of time into that thing. It looks absolutely beautiful if you ask me. And the fact that he did it outside of the States makes it even that, that much more impressive. So thank you, Carlos. I appreciate you taking the time to send those pictures and videos in. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for all the support and everything. So in a second here, we're gonna go out in the garage and I'm gonna show you those brand new CEO cylinder parts from ESR Racing, which I'm super excited about. Um, they literally came in this weekend and it's Monday. Uh, so I barely even had enough time to look at it myself, but I'm going to give you a quick look at those. Uh, but before I do that, if you guys are interested in putting your, in entering your bike for bike of the week, make sure to shoot me in a DM on Instagram at michaelsabo350. Please send in a nice picture of the quad, bike, or trike, and quad of the week or bike of the week, whatever, just so that I know that it's being submitted for that because a lot of people send in pictures of their quads and bikes. Also, remember to check out the new Mike Sabo merch. All the proceeds go to helping out the uh, channel. If I do say so myself, I do love this shirt. So without further ado, guys, let's head out in the garage. Oh yeah, baby. Here it is. So this is just a sneak preview. I'm not gonna go too into detail with this stuff. Look at that porting. This is the ESR CEO cylinder. This is the newest style cylinder that ESR has created. And you can see there is a concave piston. By the words of Blake from DBC himself, you could eat cereal out of that piston. And here is the convex cylinder dome. So you can see, the piston fits right in there, man. Pretty cool. Different design than I'm ever used to. Um, apparently Kawasaki did used to use this technology in the KX125 back in the day. I don't believe they do that any longer, but it's just some interesting information. Ooh, yeah, get all those windows in there. You can see the power valve right in here. Really, really like the look of this cylinder. I'm just gonna turn it on its side here. Oh yeah, you can get a good look in there. Looks really nice to me. You can see all this port work. All of this porting was done by ESR. I know there's some controversial views on ESR's porting. I probably will get into that with a little bit more detail when I actually do the full uh, product review, at least unboxing and everything. Give you guys a look at this head. And it is a dome that's made for race gas. So it's gonna be a high compression build. Oh, let me show you the exhaust side. Bring it here and give you guys a look in there. Considering maybe polishing that. Not 100% sure, probably not. I'm probably gonna do it just the way that Eddie sent it. And I did get more stuff, guys. There's a crank in here, all kinds of stuff. There's another box here from ESR. Um, I did not get everything just yet. So I'm still waiting on the TRX5 exhaust. Um, 
bottom end gaskets and crank bearings. And I think that's it. And then I'll have all my parts. All right, guys, so that's going to about wrap it up for this one. Uh, I will see you guys on Friday. I have a ton of stuff to show you guys, man. I am so excited about all the 250R parts that are coming in, like with those motor parts that I just showed you. Uh, I can't even express how excited I am. Uh, but yeah, so I will have my face on the grind this week. And I will definitely have a video out for you Friday. I will see you guys then. And I appreciate everybody watching. Make sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. That really helps me out. And I will see you guys on Friday.